The ankylosaurs are one of the most iconic and widely recognized groups of dinosaurs. These armored reptiles were essentially walking tanks, with extensive bony defenses shielding them from the numerous threats that were prevalent across the prehistoric world of the dinosaurs. Many species coupled these impenetrable defenses with formidable weaponry as well, with fused lumps of bone at the ends of their tails functioning as devastating clubs that they could swing at would-be predators, as well as each other, as the fossil evidence demonstrates. The early evolution of the ankylosaurs has been shrouded in mystery. These dinosaurs are best known from species that lived during the late Cretaceous period and inhabited continents in the Northern Hemisphere. However, they must have originated sometime in the early to middle Jurassic period, and the poor fossil record of the ankylosaurs from this time has hindered our understanding of exactly how these iconic creatures evolved. In 2021, paleontologists in Morocco and at the Natural History Museum in London revealed a new ankylosaur species that shed some light on their origins, as it was the oldest ankylosaur to be found so far, Spicomelus afa. Not only was the species the most ancient, but it was also the first ankylosaur to ever be named from Africa. Found in mid-Jurassic aged rocks in Morocco, it dates to between about 168 and 165 million years ago, and was based on a rib fragment that had fused spikes projecting out from the bone. Immediately, it was clear that this was a very intriguing creature, as no other animal, living or extinct, has spiked armor like this extending directly from the ribs themselves. Reconstructions of the species based on this limited material quickly abounded online, showing Spicomelus with numerous small to medium sized spikes emanating from its neck, body, and tail. But now, paleontologists have revealed that they've discovered even more fossils from Spicomelus, and what they found completely changes the appearance of this dinosaur and rewrites our understanding of ankylosaur evolution. A partial skeleton from Spicomelus has been uncovered, including numerous vertebrae, more ribs with fused spikes, armor plating, a bony shield overlying the hip region, and a bony half ring that would have been positioned in the neck, which possesses extremely long spikes, among other various bits of the skeleton. These extraordinary fossils show that Spicomelus was far more extravagant than we could have known from the initial rib fragment, with enormous spikes along the neck and by the hips, and a much wider variety of different spine shapes across the body. It also had a fused mass of bone that sat over the hip called a sacral shield, and a tail vertebra shows distinctive features indicating that it would have supported some kind of weaponry at the end of the tail, probably made up of elongated spikes fanning out from the tip. As the title of the paper puts it, this dinosaur therefore had some pretty extreme armor. No other vertebrate animal that we know of has dermal armor as elaborate as this. Even the much later ankylosaurs pale in comparison to the complexity and extravagance of Spicomelus, which has some fascinating implications for the evolution of the group. It appears that the ankylosaurs simplified their armor over time, as the oldest known member of the group had all these ridiculous long spines and a stunning range of diversity and spike shapes. But then later Cretaceous species are rather simpler, especially in the anatomy of their neck armor, which lacks spikes this elongate. The striking appearance of Spicomelus makes it seem quite likely that this dinosaur had these spikes for display purposes, rather than them performing much of an actual defense function. Defense could have been a secondary purpose, of course, but the extravagant armor, particularly the spines on the neck, would undoubtedly have been energetically expensive to grow and carry about. Therefore, the individuals with the biggest spikes would indicate that they were the most fit, as they were able to expend the resources to grow such ornate structures, and as such, they would appear the most attractive to potential mates. The driving force behind the evolution of this armor was therefore most likely sexual selection, rather than natural selection for defense. However, the later simplification of ankylosaurian armor in Cretaceous forms could suggest that these features, which had initially evolved for display, were later co-opted for primarily defensive purposes, as larger theropod dinosaurs, crocodilians, and other predators diversified during the Cretaceous, and the ankylosaurs faced increased predation pressures. An alternative hypothesis is that the simplified armor represents a switch from primarily visual-based displays to ankylosaur courtship rituals that focused more on combat between individuals, with the armor becoming more functional for protection against other ankylosaurs. Either way, this might suggest that ankylosaur armor is an example of an exaptation, a feature that was initially selected for one reason, but later functioned for a different reason when the selection pressures changed. The fact that Spicomelus likely had tail weaponry is another intriguing discovery, as this pushes back the record of tail weapons in ankylosaurs 
by around 30 million years. It was thought that tail weapons only evolved in these dinosaurs during the Cretaceous, making it a relatively late feature to develop. However, Spicomelis completely changes this interpretation, suggesting that tail weaponry could have been an ancestral trait for the entire group, which was subsequently reduced or lost in certain later lineages. This hypothesis is further supported by the recent discovery of a late Cretaceous ankylosaur from southern Chile named Stegoros, which does not seem to be closely related to the ankylosaurids, the group that possessed the famous tail clubs and which had fused bones forming a different kind of tail weapon, described as looking like a macro weetel, a weapon used by the Aztecs. Furthermore, a species named Antarctopelta, found in Antarctica, unsurprisingly, may also have had a fan-shaped tail weapon like Stegoros, according to a recent reinterpretation of its fossils. Antarctopelta also appears not to be closely related to the ankylosaurids or to Stegoros, and so the existence of tail weapons in this many unrelated ankylosaur lineages strongly supports the idea that this was an ancestral feature for the whole group that certain members later lost. But that's not it for new revelations about ankylosaur evolution, because Spicomelis also has a sacral shield, another feature of anatomy that paleontologists did not expect to be present this early on in these dinosaurs. Solid sacral shields, which are large plates of bony armour attached to the pelvis, were mainly known in the Polycanthine ankylosaurs, a lineage of nodosaurids. However, the fact that Spicomelis has won this early on in ankylosaurian evolution again changes our understanding of the distribution and evolution of this anatomical feature, suggesting that it might have been another ancestral trait that was eventually lost in some later lineages but retained by the Polycanthines. Not only do these new discoveries of more Spicomelis material upturn our understanding of when certain anatomical features evolved, but they have also significantly reshaped the entire structure and relationships within the Ankylosaur family tree. Some recent studies have found evidence for the existence of a group called Parankylosauria, which contains a few ankylosaur species from the southern hemisphere, such as Stegoros and Antarctopelta, plus some others. However, this new research splits up the proposed members of Parankylosauria and finds that one of them, Patagopelta, might not even be an ankylosaur. Antarctopelta is found to be a polycanthine, while Stegoros is classified as the earliest branching ankylosaur, despite living at the end of the Cretaceous period. This placement is particularly intriguing, as it would imply the existence of a very long ghost lineage of some very early diverging ankylosaur group that eventually gave rise to the species, but which we have no other fossil evidence of yet. Spicomelus, although it would also have lived in the southern hemisphere at this time in the Jurassic, was not found to be closely related to the other southern ankylosaurs, and instead is either a very early branching ankylosaurian, or actually an early member of the Ankylosauridae family according to an alternate evolutionary tree. In summary then, these new finds of Spicomelus show that there is still much to learn about the precise relationships of the ankylosaur family tree. More discoveries of Jurassic ankylosaurs are needed to flesh out our understanding of how they relate to one another, but gradually our knowledge of these animals is improving. Spicomelus also has some really exciting implications for how the iconic armour of these dinosaurs evolved, and it's an intriguing idea to think that it may have been entirely for display at first, before later becoming simplified and co-opted for defence. Hopefully even more fossils of Spicomelus will continue to turn up, and with any luck, some other extravagantly armoured Jurassic ankylosaurs will be found in the near future too. This really is a tremendously exciting discovery, and I hope you've enjoyed the 7 Days of Science special report all about the extreme armour of Spicomelus. Let me know in the comments what you think about this fantastic new discovery, and please do tell me if you liked this special feature, and if you want more videos profiling new finds like this. Be sure to email us at 7dos.stories at gmail.com if you have any research you'd like to see us cover, or if you want to let us know how we can improve the show as well. You can follow 7 Days of Science on Instagram and TikTok, and also be sure to support us on Patreon if you enjoy what we do here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Do you want to be in the recording, Mr. Crow? <laughs> we have a living dinosaur featuring in this video.